Hello friends, in my previous video we had a discussion on the definitions of food science, food technology, food processing and food preservation and we also discussed the differences among these terms. Today we are going to discuss the fundamental principles of food preservation and the methods of food preservation. Often we see that uh, we use these terms, the principles of food preservation and the methods of food preservation. But many a times we confuse what a principle says and what a method is all about. So that is what we are going to clarify today. Well, before uh, we actually go through the fundamental principles of food preservation, let us uh, first clarify the relationship between spoilage and preservation. As we all know that more the spoilage poor will be the method of preservation and lesser the spoilage better will be the method of preservation so overall these two are opposites if preservation is better spoilage will be less and then if spoilage is more it means that preservation is ineffective under these circumstances I many a times ask my students a question that who causes spoilage in order to understand the principles of preservation it is a must to know that who causes spoilage when I ask this question to my students I get so many answers and some of such some of these answers are yes spoilage is caused by high temperature some would say that it is high moisture which causes spoilage others say it is relative humidity high relative humidity causes spoilage some others say that injuries to the tissues are the main causes of spoilage some will say that it is the dust dirt etc which is responsible for causing spoilage some will say that sweetness is responsible for spoilage and so on we get so many answers then Few of them would say that it is the microorganisms who cause spoilage. Few will also say that sometimes the enzymes are also responsible for spoilage. Some will say that the chemicals within the food they are responsible for spoilage. Then other answers are rodents, rats, some insects, sometimes birds, animals. So these are responsible for spoilage. So when we discuss all these things, it is concluded that High temperature is one of the factors causing which is responsible for spoilage but it actually does not cause spoilage. If there is no contamination present high temperature will not cause any spoilage. Similarly high moisture also creates the favorable conditions for spoilage. High relative humidity also creates the favorable conditions for spoilage. Injuries just only create 
an entry point for the microorganisms otherwise they really don't cause any spoilage similarly dust dirt if it is, does not contain any contamination any pathogenic microorganisms it's not going to cause any spoilage similarly sweetness is good if it is devoid of any microorganisms so it's not going to cause any spoilage now it means that the microorganisms will be the first agency which causes the spoilage and definitely these will be coming from extrinsic sources from outside the community the another agency which causes spoilage will be the enzymes and the chemical substances already present in the food so these are also responsible for causing spoilage and third agency will be the rodents rats insects birds and animals so these will be causing the spoilage so in total there will be three types of culprits the microorganisms the factors within the community and then the rodents insects and birds and animals so these are all the agencies causing spoilage now coming to the fundamental principles of preservation if i wish to preserve my food then i have to address all these three i have to address the spoilage being caused because of microorganism because of the intrinsic factors and then because of the rodents rats birds etc so now what will be the principles so the principles will be the first principle the fundamental principles of food preservation so it will speak about addressing the three all the three agencies one by one so the first one will be the fundamental principles of food preservation so the first agency here will be microorganisms so the first principle says that it is the prevention or delay of microbial decomposition so if i want to preserve my food i have to either prevent or at least delay the microbial decomposition for the desired period of time now how i can do this so this can be done first by keeping out the microorganisms so in any of these conditions i have to keep this microorganism out of the system and then only i'll be in a position to preserve my food second one will be by removal of microorganisms by removal of microorganisms if somehow the microorganism has entered into the food system i have to remove these microorganism by using any of the means available then third will be by hindering the growth by hindering the growth and activity by hindering the growth and activity of microorganisms so after removal also if somehow some of the microorganisms stay i don't want them to grow so i have to hinder the growth and activity of these microorganisms i have to create those conditions where these microorganisms they are not going to proliferate and last if still some of them survive so i have to go for a kill so by killing off the microorganisms so in all these four ways i am going to address the first culprit that is the microorganisms but then what are the methods how i am going to accomplish this so the first one how i can keep the microorganism out say nature has made such a beautiful system that if you don't remove the peel of banana it will stay sound for so many days but as soon as you remove the peel it provides the entry space for the microbial contamination and it gets spoiled very fast so the first one will be first method will be asepsis these are the methods here so the first one will be asepsis and i can also accomplish this by packaging 
So in order to keep a microorganism out, either I have to do asepsis that I don't allow the entry of microorganisms into the food, natural food system. So I should keep the peel intact for as long as possible and that peel should be safe and in sound condition. And if it is already a processed one, then I have to go for packaging. But in any of the conditions, I have to keep the microorganisms out if I want to prolong the shelf life, I want to preserve my food for a long period of time. Now removal of microorganisms can be accomplished by either uh, filtration, filtration, sedimentation, cutting, chopping, etc. Et Say for example I get a um, carrot, I get a cabbage, I get some vegetable from the market which is which is rotten in some of its portion. So I will be chopping out the chopping of the uh, rot rotten portion. So in this way I remove the microorganisms. Now the third will be the hindering the growth and activity of microorganisms. For this I have to use either low temperatures. Uh, refrigeration is the means. I have to dry. Drying is another method by which I can hinder the growth and activity of microorganisms. I can reduce the pH. See, low pH is the enemy of bacteria. So bacterial spoilage will not come if the pH is less than 4.5. So that's how I can add chemical preservatives. And etc. etc. There are so many other methods. So the fourth one will be killing and it is definitely by application of heat. So I have to heat. If I want to kill the microorganisms, I have to apply heat. Sometimes radiation is also used, air radiation. And then high pressure processing. So these are the newer methods which are used definitely for killing of the microorganisms. So in order to address the first agency causing spoilage, that is the microorganism, there are four ways basically in order to do it. So the ways will be keeping out the microorganism and the methods available for this is asepsis and packaging. By removal of microorganism, methods available will be filtration, sedimentation, cutting, chopping, etc. And then the hindering the growth and activity of microorganisms. So that is low temperature, use of low temperatures, drying, pH, chemicals and so on. And similarly for killing of microorganisms, we have heat, radiation, high pressure processing, etc, etc. Now coming on to the second agency that was the self decomposition means the factor within the community itself. So here we say that the second principle speaks about prevention or delay of self decomposition. Now self decomposition means that factor within the community itself. As far as microbial decomposition is concerned, so all of the time, most of the time, that microorganisms they will be coming from outside, so they are not not present within the community. But when we talk about enzymes, so this is by prevention or delay of the enzymatic reactions. This is prevention or delay of enzymatic reactions. And second one will be the prevention or delay of purely chemical reactions. Purely chemical reactions. So, only two things to be addressed here. One is the enzymatic reactions and another one is the purely chemical reactions. So how I am I'm going to do it? So these, this is under the second principle. So for enzymatic reactions, say for example we say blanching, blanching or this is when we talk about the uh, solid foods or solid vegetables. But it can be other ways of application of heat also maybe uh, so many other methods. So that is I will say that application of heat in any other method so that it targets the enzymes. Enzyme will be inactivated and the spoilage because of the self decomposition so that can be prevented. Now another one will be the purely chemical reactions. So here in order to address it. so. So many reactions they take place. So we can make use of low temperatures because at low temperature the reaction rates they are reduced. So as far as Wenthoff quotient is concerned, he says that for every 10 degree rise in the temperature, the rate of deteriorative reaction get doubles, get doubled. So we can use low temperatures 
for reducing the rate of purely chemical reactions we can also use some antioxidants antioxidants so these can be the methods used for prevention or delay of the self decomposition so here the self generated factors the factors within the community itself so that is the culprit and we target these factors in the second principle in the third principle we talk about prevention of damage prevention of damage caused by so it can be caused by maybe rodents insects birds animals now what can be the methods here so the methods will be say for example we talk about insects or birds we can use repellents and definitely if the packaging is good so we can manage the packaging also so these are some of the methods of preservation here in order to address the third agency which are the rodents insects birds and animals so overall we have only three principles of preservation number one prevention or delay of microbial decomposition number two prevention or delay of self decomposition and number three prevention of damage caused by rodent, rodents insects birds and animals and there are a large number of methods which are used to accomplish these principles uh, and all the three agencies they are to be they are to be managed once once uh, we intend to preserve the food for long duration of time now one point i would like to emphasize here that none of these methods individually none of these methods individually are capable of preserving the food for long duration of time so under these situations it it becomes compulsory that we we will be using more than one method in combination say for example we talk about pasteurized milk so if it is pasteurized milk so then we'll be heating it up uh, in order to in order to kill most of the microorganisms and then definitely we'll be packing it so we are using two methods one is application of heat and then we are using packaging in order to keep the microorganism out and heating for killing of the microorganism on the other hand if we talk about preservation because of jam so it it involves so many methods of preservation the number one will be heating because during the preparation we are going to heat number two it will be ph the ph of jam will be 3.2 it is definitely less than 4.5 it means that we are not going to uh, have the bacterial spoilage in case of jams because the ph is 3.2 which is not a safe zone for the growth of um, bacteria number three will be that it is having high concentration of sugars so reduction of water activity also comes here which hinders the growth and activity of microorganisms so this is the third principle uh, th third method which is used for the preservation of jam and definitely we are going to pack it in uh, airtight containers so packaging is also there and packaging will be there uh, in almost all the foods which are preserved so these are the three principles of food preservation and then these are the methods so principle speaks about how we are going to preserve the food what is what is needed to preserve the food and then how we are going to actually do it so how it has to be done so that is what is spoken by the method so principle speaks what to do method speaks how to do so that's all as far as the principles fundamental principles and methods of food preservation are concerned. In the next lecture, we'll be discussing the concept of value addition. Thank you very much.